UFC for over 10 years. I fought the best in the world. I've had my ups and my downs, but you can't keep a good man down. When is Bisping gonna get his shot? I do believe in destiny. People don't know the road I've been on. I know I'm a loud mouth idiot at times. I can be a dick, I know I can, but I'm just out here trying to look after my family, look after my children, and give them the best life possible. With the only way I know I can, this is what I do, I fight. I don't do anything better in this world than fight. I will perform, I will give you what you paid to see. Everybody wrote me off, nobody gave me a chance, but I never stopped believing myself. Vince Big Carter with a left! I want this more than anyone. I will be the champion one day. I want to prove to myself and for my country and for everyone that's supported me over the years that I'm good enough to be world champion and I will be world champion. It's my destiny. Lucas? When I won the belt, you were watching Minecraft. You were watching Minecraft on Mummy's phone. So, my next fight, do you think I'm going to win or lose? Uh, I'd like it if you said, I think you're going to win, Dad. Uh, no idea. Carla, do you think I'm going to win or lose? I reckon I'll win. You reckon? Can I have I reckon. with a bit of, you know, Ellie. Yeah. Don't let me down. Am I going to win or lose? I'm going to win. Life is good, you know. Um, I'm a happy man. I've got a beautiful wife, three children. Let me feel your muscles. Whoa! And this one? Oh, that one's even bigger. Successful career? What more do you want? I started doing this when I was eight years old. To finally be world champion, to be recognised by the best organisation in the world, yeah, it means a lot, it really does. But, uh, you know, I'm still same old Michael Bisping from Clitheroe. Clitheroe's a nice, old-fashioned market town. It's quaint, it's historic. Small town, I don't know, maybe 15,000 people. 25 pubs in the town centre. And growing up, it, you know, it was fun. I was a good kid, I really was, but I had a lot of energy. I had a lot of energy and that energy got me in trouble. I spent more time in the headmaster's office when he was at school than probably the headmaster did. I was always getting called in. Michael had done this, Michael had done that. But nine times out of 10, it was someone else had started something. Michael finished it. I used to get in a lot of trouble at school, you know, and that was mainly for just being, you know, I always had something to say. Always had to get the last word. He was lippy, you know, he could reduce people to tears, either with his fists or, or with his mouth. He got into martial arts when he was about seven. I never really had an interest in studying or schoolwork at that time. And the teacher would be like, why didn't you do your homework? And I'm like, sorry, sir, I was, uh, I went to Nottingham last night to do jiu-jitsu. And he was like, don't lie to me, Bisping. No one goes to Nottingham to do a jiu-jitsu class. But we did, my dad did, because he recognised I had ability and uh, wanted to get me the best training possible. I used to have to take him all over the country to competitions. He was competing as a 13-year-old. He'd been the under 13s, he'd been the under 14s, he'd been the under 16s, and normally get like the silver medal in the adult. Yes, That's if he didn't win it. But then he got to about 16 and he discovered there was other things in life for a 16 year old boy to do. Left school and then did a series of dead end jobs. Labouring, Tyler, you name it, he did, he did it. I was working at a, uh, a factory in Clitheroe and Rebecca was in the offices and I started spotting her around on a night out here and there so I'd go off and say hi and, you know, give up my best cheesy chat-up lines. He was confident, funny. He just instantly made me a very happy person. We knew we were meant to be together. We moved in, I got pregnant with Callum. And then, of course, uh, Callum was quickly followed by Ellie and we had two children. That was a massive thing for me. It's not just about you anymore. You know, you, you're trying to provide for a family and trying to give them the best life you can. And working minimum wage wasn't gonna get that done. He wanted to be able to provide a really nice life for them and he just couldn't at that time and it was frustrating for him. I actually tracked down my old jiu-jitsu coach, a guy called Paul Davies. 
When I was a kid, this guy always said I could go on and be something special. And he said to me, he said, Michael, since you've been aware, the UFC has exploded. He said, you've got what it takes to go on to be world champion. He said, you'll make tons of money. He asked me my opinion and I said, it's, it's not down to me. I said, it's down to, and I pointed to his now wife. She's the one that's working. You know, you're not going to earn a lot. I said, why do you want to do it? And he said, well, I don't want to be sitting on the same settee in 10 years time thinking, what if? I knew I could do this. I knew I could fight. Combine that with my martial arts, combine that with my temperament, combine that with my competitiveness. Anything I'm doing, I have to win. I started training and applying myself. I had to fight though. Training is one thing, but I had to make some money. I started booking fights and my first fight, I remember it. It was at an event in Newcastle. The fight went my way, I knocked him out in about 30 seconds. And my next fight was a few weeks later, boom, again. 30 second knockout, and then again, and again. In his early pro fights, he was unstoppable. There didn't seem to be anybody in Europe that could touch him. Oh, and he looks like this thing had time for us. He was fast, aggressive, and he could hit. This is very close. This thing with a good knee, and that's it. I became the Cage Rage World Champion. I got the Cage Warriors World Belt. I was tearing through the UK scene. I was winning fight after fight, and all the while my skills it was getting better. He was just too ferocious for them, and he overwhelmed people. And they either ended up curling up in a ball and cowering, or they were unconscious. Again, another good right hand. Is it over? It's finished. Mike Bisping has got a knockout. I first heard about Michael early on in his career. You know, he went 10 and 0 before he even smelt the UFC. Great win from Mike Bisping. 10 fights, 10 wins, 10 stoppages. The whole of the UK MMA scene was really kind of bubbling about him. I think by then we knew we had something a little bit special. He was literally jumping from one promotion to the other, which is why he collected so many belts. He wasn't satisfied just to be the Cage Rage champ, just to be the Cage Warriors champ. Mike wanted to stay busy, he wanted to win everything. He was trying to prove a point. Number one. Pretty much any title that there was to have in England, I owned at that time, so there wasn't much more I could do domestically. The Ultimate Fighter came about, and I remember watching it thinking, man, you know, th th this is cool and I would love to be on there. Season three, they were having open auditions in the UK. I went there to the auditions and, you know, all the other light heavyweights there, anyone that was decent, I'd beaten them all. I'd beaten them all inside the first round. When Mike signed up for Tough, obviously UK MMA was super excited. You know, this was what we were waiting for. We wanted one of our guys to go over there and prove to the Americans that we could hang with them. I've never been to America before in my life. And here I am on a reality TV show in Las Vegas. With 16 other fighters living in the house. Come on, that, that, that's a good time to me. My name's Mike the Count Bisping. I've gone halfway across the world for this. There's one thing I've always been good at, and that's been fighting. I, I feel I can, I've got what it takes to make a real living out of this, you know, a real career. First time I met Michael Bisping was getting ready for that season of The Ultimate Fighter, season three and I liked him. I liked his personality. I liked his fighting style. I was into Bisping right away. Michael just kind of steps in there and dominated it. Right out the gate, we figured we were gonna have a guy who was probably gonna be a champion. It's now come down to this one defining moment to see who will be crowned the ultimate fighter and go on to receive a six-figure contract with the UFC. When the fight was just about to start, I was in the octagon. I remember looking up at the lights and I, I, I nearly fainted. I was so nervous because so much was resting on this. My coach at the time said, Michael, just take a deep breath, deep breath. So I started taking deep breaths and I started uh, to relax. And then he said to me, he said, Michael, remember, every single piece of training you've done has come down to this moment. And then that sent me off the deep end again. I'm like, not the correct advice to give me right now. Oh, big knee. How is Haynes still standing? Oh, Haynes is in trouble. That's it's it. all over. Michael Bisping is the ultimate fighter. I was so pleased for him. That's all he wanted was getting the UFC. He wasn't looking beyond that, you know. To be here standing tonight as the champion is just an absolute dream come true. I don't know what else to say. 
It was definitely the start of something big when, when Michael won the season. Because all of a sudden, the US would take us seriously. You win the six-figure contract with the ultimate fighting championship. UK MMA was kind of validated on the international stage. It had arrived because of Michael Bisping's success. Hey, thanks, Dana. Thank you, buddy. Even though I'd won the Ultimate Fighter, the prize is a contract. You earn money, but you have to fight to earn the money. I'd filmed the Ultimate Fighter in June, and then my next fight wasn't scheduled until December. So, again, we were still flat broke at this point. First fight, UFC 66. We went out there, the fight was great. Knocked him out first round. And it is all over! Very, very nice performance by Michael Bisping. Backstage, I get, I, I get a message, Dana and Lorenzo want to see you. Dana and Lorenzo want to see me, I'm like, what do they want to see me for? And they just wanted to say, man, that was awesome, amazing, well done. And they handed me an envelope. And they went, open it, open it, you know? And inside there, there was a check. I think it was $80,000. I'd never seen that type of money in my life. It brought a little tear to my eye, you know, it was amazing. But then I ran out and Rebecca was sat in the stands by herself and I felt so sorry for her. You know, she'd come all this way and anyway, I sprinted up the stands and, you know, to share that with Rebecca. It was a, it was a good time. It wasn't about the money, it wasn't, you know, it was about this journey we'd been on. Hardship, borrowing money and parents and this and that. And here we are now in Las Vegas, you know, with, you know, $100,000 in my pocket. You know, it's like, told you, babe. I was just so proud of this man that he's gone and achieved all of this and it's finally paid off. It was just a happy moment. My career was going great. I was earning money, I was making waves, I was going through the rankings. The decision to move to middleweight was a great one. As a light heavyweight, he was aggressive and he was powerful. As a middleweight, he could keep a pace on people that they just couldn't stand. Relentless once again, Bisping. I was able to let free with my fighting style a little bit more. And down he goes! Successful debut, impressive stoppage. My next one was a stoppage. Michael Bisping wins here in London! From the moment I dropped down to 185, I had my eyes on becoming champion. He was really starting to lay his groundwork, if you like, towards a title shot. You know, three fights undefeated against name fighters as well, which gave everybody hope that we had this world champion in waiting. The UFC told me if I won my next fight, they'd give me a title shot. Then they put me up against Dan Henderson at UFC 100. When I started my uh, career as a professional mixed martial artist, I only had one vision, that was to go right to the top. I, I didn't want to scrape by, I didn't just want to be another fighter. I feel very, very confident coming into this fight. And I'm going to win. The Dan Henderson fight was a massive deal for, for Michael. It was a marquee event, obviously, being UFC 100. Never has there been a buzz like there is tonight. There was a lot of, uh, of trash talking leading up to the fight. There was a lot of, uh, of bad blood going into the fight. So ego was at stake in, in a massive way. UFC 100, the biggest event, even still to this day, 1.7 or something million pay-per-view buys. My biggest fight ever, title eliminated for the UFC. And I get knocked out in the most vicious way possible. That's oh, it! Oh, he's out, down! Out. And it is all over! Dan wow. Henderson has knocked out Michael Bisping! Ouch. Dan Henderson leapt with his whole body weight into that shot. Bisping wow. knocked out for the first time in his career. Every fighter deals with a loss like that in different ways. Am I going to get knocked out as soon as I get touched again? And then the other thing you've got to bear in mind as well is that wasn't just a regular knockout. I mean, that was massive. It became very much a part of the current pop culture of the sport. He was down. You know, I mean, that was a, a chance where he shot at, you know, at the title and that had gone. When we got back to the UK, he just started talking about his next fight and that was it, you know, it's history, it's forgotten about. You can't change history. I think it's a real testament to Michael Bisping's determination. The goals that he'd set for himself had not been shaken by that knockout. It's one of the things that I respect about Bisping, to get beat that dominantly, then pick yourself back up, 
and start fighting your way to the top again. That's Bisbing's mentality. I knew what people were saying about me. He's done. He's finished. That pissed me right off. I knew I wasn't done. I knew going into my next fight, UFC 105 against Dennis Kang in Manchester, there was a lot of pressure on me there. Look how pumped up he is. You know what, that Dan Henderson loss could have created a monster. It was no surprise when he walked out into the arena and the fans went crazy. It was a good reminder for him that the fans were still behind him after the Henderson loss. He needed to feel that he was still relevant in the division, he was still a, a contender. Bisping looking to finish Dennis Kang. That was the perfect fight to come back to Manchester, to regroup, you know, to have his fans behind him, his family behind him. Kang took a knee. Kang's in trouble. And it is all over. Wow. Tremendous performance. He had his back up against the wall and, in my opinion, had the performance of his career. If you look through the history of fight sports, a lot of guys that get knocked out in the fashion that Mike Bisping did to Dan Henderson. They're never the same fighter, their confidence is completely shattered. It was a critical moment coming back to fight Dennis Kang because that was the rebuilding process. And for me, that, that, that was one of my proudest moments. They said I was finished. And I went out there, I proved I wasn't finished. I'm going nowhere. Michael Bisping came around at the right time for British Mixed Martial Arts. He came around at a time when we needed someone that was confident and ferocious and successful. And he was all of those things. He was the guy in the UK that was driving the UFC product, that was the pioneer for us. He's been on more covers than any fighter in the history of fighters only over the last 10 years. Again, that, that flag bearer role that he's played so well throughout his career. He has quickly become one of the most exciting one of the most popular fighters in the UFC. Like always, I got the knockout of the TKO. Anyone, everyone, they better watch the fucking back. Mike's got that Northwest banter, even though he lives in California now and he's got a he's got a dodgy accent. He's still got that same banter going. I'll fight Alan Belch on the way to the car right now. It's no problem. He needs to focus on having a fight with his tattoo artist and leave me alone. I love Bisping. We have a great relationship, but Bisping's a dick. Mike's a dick. And he doesn't have a problem being a dick. <laughs> England won, I know. USA Zero. fucking none. The Americans don't get British sense of humour. Fact. Did you get win? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that made him <laughs> seem to be no. maybe a bit cocky, maybe a bit over-aggressive to the Americans. Yeah. Welcome to the UFC, dickhead. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the fucking little yeah. leagues yeah. after right. this. Yeah. But the English love that sort of banter. I just don't know the look on his face. I mean, he seems like a nice enough guy, but he has got a face designed for punching. Bisbing is who he is, and who he is fits right into what we do. This is mano a mano, individual versus individual. On September 22nd, I'm going to individually beat the crap out of him. He'll let you know exactly what he thinks, whether you like it or not, and I think it's fun. I'm, I'm a better wrestler, better jiu-jitsu, better boxing, better kickboxing. I'm fitter, I'm stronger, and I'm better looking. What the fuck is he going to do? <laughs> Michael's ability to sell fights has always been one of his strongest assets. And I think the reason that he's so successful at it is because it's not contrived in any way. I have no respect for that guy whatsoever. I think he's a piece of shit, is what I think. And uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm getting my message across on how I feel about him. People don't want to go and watch a fight between two guys that's, that say niceties to each other and, and shake hands all the time. Like you're not gonna get that from Michael Bisping. He's not gonna wanna shake your hand during the fight because he's come to fight you. Fighting, yeah, of course, it's a very physical sport, but, but the mental aspect of it is huge. And you can have an opponent beat before the fight even starts. Whenever I weigh in for a fight, you know, generally there's always a bit of fireworks and a bit of, you know, argy-bargy. And I do that not because I'm a bloody crazy maniac. I'm, it's mind games. I'm trying to get in his head. I'm trying to tell him on that scale, right then and there, mate, this is real, right? See me, tomorrow night, I'm gonna be in your face. Mike has a knack for making every fight he's in interesting. He gets under people's skin. He trash talks, he makes it personal. It's an art form. It doesn't matter what the matchup is, people wanna watch him fight because they either wanna see him win or they wanna see him get crushed, but either way, they're watching. Behind all of the smiles, the laughs, some of the trash talk, he's an extremely hard worker. 
You know, he is a lifelong martial artist who's put a tremendous amount of time into his craft. He puts long, long hours in the gym since he was a child. And, and that, as a mixed martial artist, as a lover of this sport, that demands your respect. I've never called Bisbing and Bisbing's wanted to turn down an opponent. Bisbing's always up for the challenge to fight anybody. Oh, just teeing away is Michael Bisbing. You know, he's extraordinarily well-rounded. Overwhelming aggression, dominance on the ground. The volume and the pace that he can maintain is one of his greatest weapons on top of excellent hand speed, precision accuracy, and very good footwork. Michael Bisping has the record for the most significant strikes landed. Wow. There's the combinations of Bisping that have been so effective in his career. It's an amazing record to hold. It just defines his, his output and his work rate and his conditioning as well to be able to throw as many strikes as he has in his UFC career, almost 1,500, I think, in total. For every one punch that you throw at him, you can guarantee he's going to throw three or four back in your direction. He's never been a fighter that waits for Joe Silver to pick up the phone. He's never been like that his entire career. He's always ready to call not just the next guy, but the guy after that out as well. He's always looking two steps ahead in his career. And I think that's why he has stayed relevant in the top 10 of the middleweight division for so long, even though he has had losses. Every fighter wants to fight for the belt. And to achieve that, you have to work your way up. And I've done that several times. I've got into number one contender matchups to where if I'd have won that fight, I'd have been fighting for the belt. And it's nobody's fault but mine, I lost those matchups. He was always so close. He was never completely outclassed. He was never completely outworked. He was never out cardioed. He was never outstruck. He was fighting with everything he had. He was improving between fights and he was fighting the best guys around. We all wanted Bisping to get his title shot and he fell short on so many occasions. We thought it'd gone. We thought it passed him by. It looked like it was never going to happen. You know, how many times can a guy have a final eliminator and fall at the final hurdle? Tremendous high kick. Todd Bisping right on the outside of the eye there. It's well documented I had a, a nasty eye injury. Vitor Belfort threw a head kick, detached my retina, and, and I was unlucky with that, you know. I mean, really, everything that can go wrong with an eye went wrong. It was one thing after the other. It was over a year sat there doing nothing. You miss that excitement, you miss the thrill, you miss being in the thick of it all, you know? I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna fight again. You know, fortunately, the doctors did a great job. I had a number of surgeries, passed the medicals, I could still fight. And uh, it is what it is, you know, you play these games, fighting the UFC, they're messing around. This is, uh, it's, it's real stuff, you know, so with real consequences. But it is what it is, I wouldn't change a thing. Again, he's come back from adversity. You know, there was the Henderson knockout, then there was the Vitor knockout. Now we're in a situation where he's got a potentially career-ending injury, and he's determined to work through it and come back. And come back he does. That's the Michael Bisping we have known since 2006. Look at that. Great cardio. Oh! Cookley goes down. Bisping looking to fish. It is all over! I took some time off, had some problems. This is what I'm capable of. Believe me, I'm capable of better. What do I want? I want the title. There's an idiot called Luke Rockhold who doesn't stop talking about me. I think he has the hearts for me, to be honest. Luke Rockhold, you called me out. If you want to do it, let's dance. Here I am. As with all of Michael Bisping's fights, pretty much, the Rockhold fight was rife with bad blood. Luke Rockhold came down to my gym one day when I was training to fight somebody. I forget who it was. We sparred, and he can say whatever he likes. I beat the piss out of him. I beat him from pillar to post. And, and that was that. Now, I didn't mention anything, but I was on a TV show and they mentioned, they said to me, they said, oh, Michael, we heard that you sparred with Luke Rockhold recently. How did that go down? And I said, well, let's put it like this. I said, I'm now the unofficial strike force champion. It was a joke. This guy cannot get over it. And ever since then, he's so upset about it. He just won't shut up. My hands were on my knees for two rounds straight. Listen, and you listen, couldn't do a damn listen, thing the in the best the day, shape of your life it's a goddamn as sparring. I'm switching my stance. I made an off-the-cuff remark. I was it's having a, a laugh, tasteless okay? tasteless remark. Well, whatever. That Completely was a long time tasteless. ago. Now we're going to fight. Whatever. So, you know, we'll get to the bottom of it pretty fast. Yeah, and will. I'll knock that smug look off your face, son, believe you me. Rockhold and, and Bisbing have similar personalities, and they rub each other the wrong way. How many guys have you actually knocked on the floor? Plenty, plenty. What? Many, many. I've never seen it.
Bisming's a guy just uh, he opened his mouth, so I I'd love to shut him up for good. If that lanky streak of piss wants to get it on, I have no problem. It's one of those fights where neither guy wants to lose to that guy. It's gonna be a great fight, ladies and gentlemen. Luke Rockhold at the time, he was the future. He was the middleweight division at that point. He was on a freight train towards Chris Weidman, and everybody was tipping Rockhold to completely dominate this division for a long time. Well, it's been a long time coming. Luke Rockhold versus Michael Bisping. Again, it just wasn't his night. Headbutt, headbutt. He seemed to be so concerned with other things going on around him that he didn't give Rockhold his full attention. Oh, oh, and a head kick. Bisping's down. Big head kick. Oh, and that could be it. This could be the finish. Luke Rockhold with a one arm mounted guillotine. It kind of felt like his last chance. That wasn't the first or the second or even the third eliminator he'd been in. He'd had more than his fair share. It looked like the end of the road. I remember stepping into the octagon, and that was the first time I saw a question in his eyes. It was the first time he looked like, maybe I'm not going to make it. I moved out here in 2011. I moved around, training at different gyms for a while. It took me a long time to find the right coach. I was training a friend of his down here at Ruka. He shot me a call and came on down. He felt that I had something to, that he can gain from. He can actually get something off of me. And I felt that I had a real fighter in front of me. I felt like he had no direction. He didn't know where he was going. He was just fighting strictly on heart, speed, and experience. You know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He starts letting those emotions start controlling him. He starts letting those emotions anger him. I see this in a guy, especially a guy with the talent that he has. I think to myself, this guy could be champion. We just have to get this thing right. Push, boom. Push, three. Push, push. It's aggressive, huh? It's such an emotional roller coaster as a fighter. And Jason's been there. Jason was an undefeated boxer, you know, and he understands what we go through mentally and how to handle that, how to handle these emotions. Hey, way we want to work right there, bud. I used to find something I really didn't like about my opponent, or maybe something they said, maybe an insult or whatever. You know, I used to, if I can go into these fights as angry as possible, there's no way that these guys will beat me. You know, now I know if you're angry, if you're emotional, you're never the best version of yourself. He has me nice and calm, cool, calm and collected. If you're an emotional wreck and you're stressed out and you're lashing out and all these things, how are you going to perform in any field? How are you going to perform to the best of your ability? It's impossible. So you certainly can't fight to the best of your ability. Luke Rockhold with a one-arm mounted guillotine. Chokes out Michael Bisping. After the Rockhold loss, there was times there I thought I was never going to get a title shot. He knew after that fight that it set him back 1,000%, especially at where he's at, because he's been there before. Before that fight with Rockhold, I did an interview with a journalist, and he actually said to me, this is it, right, Michael? If you don't win this fight, you're never going to come close to a UFC title fight ever again. Basically, this fight is make or break for you, Michael. I said, no, no, it's not. I'm going nowhere. And as long as I can still train and perform like I know I can, then I will continue to try. He's not just showing up for a paycheck. Michael Bisping loves to fight. And he still truly believes he can be the middleweight champion of the world. I know more than anybody, I've had my setbacks. But trust me, I'm still working. I want this more than anyone. I will be the champion one day. He hasn't left his mind yet. He hasn't forgot about that. He got set back and then the whole world talks shit to this motherfucker. And he's just like, I'm campaigning and I'm gonna continue to fight till I get to that world title. It's in his mind, it's in his guts. That's what he's gonna do and that's the guy that I know. I wanna be world champion. I know I have the tools, but you have to back it up. This is the start of backing it up. That's the man that we're dealing with right there and that's special. I'm still here, 10 years later, undefeated in the UK. Christmas Eve, I'm on the couch with the kids, phone rings, Dana White, 
Someone, what's, what's Dana want on Christmas Eve? Oh, there we go. Anyway, long story Dana. short, he says, Mike, you're fighting Anderson Silva. The greatest champion in UFC history. This was a guy that was doing incredible things in the octagon. I mean, that's just amazing. Oh, and again. again, he's out. When Anderson Silva was the greatest of all time, he was untouchable, and he was dominating the middleweight division. That is who Michael wanted to fight. Michael Bisping said, you're all gonna think I'm crazy, but I believe my style is perfect to beat Anderson Silva. What is that? What are you doing? Are you trying to intimidate me? It ain't gonna work on me, pal. I always wanted to show the world I could beat Anderson Silva. Now here we are, in London, sold out crowd. Nice. Don't get bigger than this in London. What a main event for Michael in London. And it is now or never for the perennial contender if he's to get that elusive title shot. It almost paralleled a title shot. If he could have got a title shot at that point, I'm sure he would have taken it. Would he have chosen it over Anderson Silva? I don't know, I'm not sure. Because I think Anderson Silva was a key victory that he'd always hoped to, to be able to claim. He is testing his skills against one of the greatest fighters to have ever lived. Oh, good shot, for Bisping! First round went my way. Second round, more of the same. Oh, oh, Anderson goes down for a second. Michael's pouring on the pressure. Michael really solidified a strong lead. This is exactly where Michael wants to be going into the third round. I'm thinking to myself, just keep doing this. Just keep doing what I'm doing. And it's towards the end of the third round, my mouthpiece went flying. And, you know, I want to hang on to my teeth. Here comes the onslaught of Anderson Silva. Michael's lost his mouth guard, but Anderson Silva does not care. And as Michael was pointing at the referee and asking for his mouth guard back. Oh! Jumping Huge knee! knee. Michael at goes end, down! But that is the buzzer. When he got hit with that flying knee from Anderson Silva, it was, oh man, it, it's all going to end. And once again, you know, Mike gets so close to that crowning achievement and it's gonna be taken from him. He made that one mistake, and he's gonna regret this forever when he comes back to watching it. And then as I'm watching the fight, he's not out. He's not giving up. Anderson Silver is convinced that this fight is over, but Herb Dean is saying it's not. As the knee lands, the round ends. So I'm on the floor, I was knocked down, certainly, but I wasn't unconscious. I remember I'm holding Mike by the arm, and I'm walking him back to our corner to sit him down. He's got a cut here, a cut here, he's got cuts all over his place. I just told him, like I said, listen, we're winning this fight. And within that 60 seconds of getting knocked down, sitting on his stool, getting stood back up, and the fight starting again, he'd managed to regroup and immediately start to put pressure on Anderson again. Michael Bisping is not giving Anderson Silver an inch here. In that moment right there, you get to peer into the heart of Michael Bisping and see how badly he wanted it. What he's made of as a competitor, as a mixed martial artist, as a man. It could be the most impressive thing Michael's ever done. Michael's tenacity shows through again and he puts on 10 more minutes of pressure for Anderson Silver and, and gets the victory. Michael! Words can't describe the emotions that were running through all of us when we were watching that fight. To think that it was over in the third round and then to come back and to win it, it was incredible. I'm actually glad it happened like that. You know, I wanted to fight through adversity. It was an absolute war. And you can see on my face now, you know, I've had a long, hard career. I used to be somewhat of a good looking guy, believe it or not, back in the day. Everybody here, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here now. And most of all, Rebecca, Callum, Ellie and Lucas, I love you so much. It was obvious how much it meant to Michael. That was the, the most real moment that we've seen of Michael in the octagon, in my opinion. If ever there was a time for Michael to step away, that would have been a, 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 good, a good opportunity. But obviously that's not gonna happen, because it's Michael. Now he's beat Anderson Silver, he's checked that off his list. The last thing to do is to hold the belt, and the guy that's holding the belt is Luke Rockhold. That's it, it that's it, we got a new over. champion. Luke Rockhold is the new UFC middleweight champion of the world! Wow. Rockhold was supposed to fight Chris Wyman in an immediate rematch. And then I see on Twitter, Wyman might be injured. 
The injury bug strikes again. This time, it's Chris Weidman, who is out of the middleweight title fight against Luke Rockhold, originally set the headline UFC 199 June 4th. I text Dana White. I say, hey, Dana, you know where I am. This whole time, I'm in uh, Toronto. I'm filming the new Triple X movie with Vin Diesel, Samuel L. Jackson, no big deal. And then the next day, I'm walking into the gym, and my phone, bing, 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 bing. I've got some breaking news here, yeah. uh, so let's get to it. Dana, who is it? Who's going to fight Luke Rockhold in UFC 199? The next guy in line is Michael Bisbing. I ran out of the gym like a, a man possessed, and I just started running. I didn't want to stop. I've wanted to fight for the UFC world belt my entire life. My entire UFC career, over 10 years in the organization. Here I am, I get to fight the guy on two weeks notice. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's almost like I've been set up. I just thought, this is just so typical of my life that I get this shot and it's on two weeks notice. And I was getting a little emotional and I thought, I don't believe this. I'm gonna lose this fight and I'm never gonna get a title shot ever again and I'm going to be a laughing stock, and people are going to say, you know, look at him, he could never compete, he had no business being there. And by the end of the run, I'd come to terms with it and i calmed down. And I thought, hold on a minute, I just ran all that way. My cardio is actually pretty good. I finished the movie, I flew back, I went straight to the gym. Jason said, he said, Michael, he said, you've been preparing for this moment your entire life. You don't need an eight-week training camp. He said, you've just beat Anderson Silva. The conditioning's in there. The skill sets there, the skills that you've worked on since you were eight years old, everything's there. He said, you just gotta harness it. Luke Rockhold, I knew by watching his training footage that he was gonna be vulnerable to that left hook. And most importantly, I knew he was gonna be vulnerable to that left hook, but I knew Mike had control over his left hook. Until you actually feel it hit a guy's face and a guy falls to the floor, you know, that's when you got control of your punch. Jason recognized the left hook was gonna be the money shot. He always left his right hand down, which is leaving his chin exposed. And Jason called it, he said, left hook, the left hook is gonna do it. And we drilled it over and over and over and over. The middleweight champion, Luke Rockhold from the Bay Area and his new opponent. Last time it was a mistake letting you get out of the first round. This time it won't happen. Every fight is different, you know this. Don't underestimate me, pal. All the pressure's on you, mate. I'm coming in, swinging, I'll be hard and fresh, and I'm looking for your chin, pal, and it only takes one. So don't come in too overconfident, pal, because I'll make you pay for it. UFC 199 takes place this Saturday, June 4th. Headline with these two title fights. In the last couple of days before the fight, Rockhold was saying some things that were concerning me, like the fight was a given, like he was going to walk away with the victory and, and embarrass Michael. Luke just completely discredited me. He said some things about me personally, like he attacked my eye. I know you no, can't see straight, but you obviously can't think straight either. Which I thought, you know, you got no respect, man. If you believe in something, if you know something is going to happen, if you're confident in that situation, you will achieve things in life. Believe it and you achieve it. I know that I'm better than this. Sounds like I the know worst self-help book you've ever read. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. You're talking like you're like this dominant champion. It's not like you're Anderson Silva, who I just beat, by the way. OK, this is your first defense. You're going to lose the belt. When you get Rockhold and Bisbing together, it's literally comedy. I mean, the guys hate each other. They're very opinionated on, on each other and basically just sitting there ripping each other apart. I can't wait for Saturday, guys. Yeah, I can't wait. Michael, I, I get to walk in be a short on two weeks notice. I get to punch him in the face and become world champion at the same time. I am a happy man. Yeah, Michael, it's my destiny. I actually wanted to ask you. Yeah, it is. You just said, believe it, it will come real. It is my destiny. I believe, Luke. You I believe. Biz been kept saying, I just want to let you know one thing. No two fights are the same. If you think they are, you're crazy. You're gonna learn that they're not. This guy, Lee Rockhold, I know is a great fighter, but I'll tell you this, there's not a single person in the world I would rather take the belt off than this smug motherfucker right here. For the fifth time, we are in Los Angeles. This is UFC 199, Rockhold versus Bisping 2. Before every single fight, 
I always go find a, a quiet, dark place, and I close my eyes, and I just think about the journey I've been on. I think about every sacrifice I've made. I think about my family. I think about the reasons why I do this. Nerves are always there. You're always nervous. Of course you're nervous. If you don't say you're nervous, then, then you're stupid or you're a liar. I'm not scared of the fight. The getting punched or kicked in the face isn't what bothers me, isn't what scares me, isn't what makes me nervous. It's losing what makes me nervous. Your time, Michael. Ten years left. I was very confident. You know when your fighter is just where he needs to be. He's in control, and that's what I was trying to work on with him since day one. He knew there was pressure, but he wasn't allowing himself to feel it because he felt that the pressure in that situation was all on Rockhold. The late notice helped because he didn't spend 12 weeks in camp thinking about Rockhold, thinking about the first fight. He had a short space of time to get himself ready, get his fitness up. Next thing you know, he's walking to the octagon for the biggest fight of his life. 2006 is when we met Michael Bisping. Tonight, the 26th time he enters this octagon, and this his first chance to win UFC gold. He took this fight gladly on short notice, stepping in there for a rematch against Luke Rockhold, and he believes this is his destiny. I know my son. Beat him the first time. You ain't gonna beat him the second time. You ready? You ready? Let's get it on. Here we go! Rockhold utilizing those great kicks that we've seen so often early. We wanted him to move into his left, you know, to stay away from Rockhold's big kick in the back. Good straight left by Rockhold and Bisping counters. Mike was really you know, sneaking that right hand and making it almost a jab fashion right hand, not trying to load it up so much and just kind of use it to put himself in position for that left hook. Try to sneak that in there a little bit more. Rockhold with his chin straight up in the air, Mike. You know, I saw him sneak that little right hand in there, and I'm like, there you go. Rockhold has this air of invincibility mentally right now as well. Never more confident. That's it. It's the new That's it. UFC middleweight champion of the world! Oh my goodness. You couldn't write it. As I say, destiny. It felt like fate. Like, I don't know if I believe in fate, but that felt like fate. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. I knew, like, Tuesday comes after Monday. Michael Bisping was gonna be Luke Rockhold for the world title. It was just, I see, there you go. I see you, you're doing it, boom. I freaked out, I ran out there. I didn't even have my jacket on, I had my sleeves rolled up, but I've known Bisping for so long. I know how hard he's worked to get there and to win that title. So I wanted to be out there and I wanted to put the belt on him. I'll never forget that moment, watching Dana put that belt around his waist. All the years of hard work, it was all, it all paid off. Dreams can come true and they did. He looked so happy, I was so pleased for him. You know, I, I couldn't be more proud. Listen, I gotta be humble here, even though I wanna be an asshole. So, first of all, thank you all for being here. Obviously, I am so happy right now. I started fighting when I came out of my mother, really. I have always been a fighter. It always got me in trouble. But there's nothing I do better in this life than fighting. To see him finally achieve the one thing he really wanted to achieve, it was, uh, it was a special night. I, I, I was happy for him. A lot of people said it was never going to happen. I was a 10 to 1 underdog. Everybody wrote me off. Everybody. Nobody gave me a chance. But I never stopped believing myself. People thought I was a delusional. They thought I was kidding myself. They thought I had an elevated opinion of myself. But all the while, I knew I could do it. My dad knew I could do it when I was a kid. 
My coaches knew I could do it. My wife knew I could do it when I quit work. That was a lifetime's work. It wasn't the two weeks notice. It wasn't the training camp. That was a lifetime's work and dedication that got that win. Hey, 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 hey. somebody get me a beer. <laughs> like right now, it's like, doesn't feel real. Like, it does, because he's there holding it, yeah, but like, I need to watch it back. Yeah. Oh! This is heavy. I was screaming. That was the first time I've ever yeah, like now that you are the champion, what do you foresee for your future? I foresee for my future. One, two, three, ten drinks tonight. Uh, I, a very, very sore head tomorrow. Nothing to do with Luke Rockhold, of course, <laughs> but I, I foresee a hangover of epic proportions. I'm not going to lie. Excellent. Well, you go celebrate Monday. Well, Michael, welcome. And, and look at this. Britain has its first mixed martial arts world champion in the UFC. Isn't that something? The support from the UK, and I say it all the time, I'm eternally grateful. I know we're a proud sporting nation and we like to support our own. I, I get that, but I, I feel that the support I've had, they've gone above and beyond. Britain's first ever UFC champion, Michael the Count Bisping. It's mind blowing, to be honest. I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the support here. Of course, I always wanted to represent England and bring this belt back to England and bring it back to Manchester. Mike Bispin is Mike Bispin. He's never changed. He's never disguised the fact that he came from nothing. And that's what fans buy into. I think that's what fans can kind of relate to. He's the working man's hero. It brings the UFC closer to the fans. This is one of our guys. This guy made it against all the odds. This guy's made it. This belt belongs in the UK. Michael Bisping will be remembered as one of the pioneers of UK mixed martial arts that set out on a career path that had not been carved by anybody else before. Mike's built his entire career, knocking down those barriers and proving that, yeah, a guy from Clitheroe, with next to nothing, that did sleep in his car, can conquer the world. Nothing was handed to him. He's had to work so hard. He's had so many setbacks. Every obstacle that he met along the way just wasn't enough to, to deter him. It is a credit to him as an athlete and as a competitor, but also as a human being to have overcome and to have stayed the distance and to have not given up when a lot of people would have done will always define Michael Bisping. Look how long he's lasted in the UFC. That's special. It's tough to do that and it's tough to win a world title and he's done it all. What he's achieved to me is unbelievable. I'm just proud of him. He'd do anything for his children and everything he does is for his family. That's his legacy. It's an incredible journey that he's been on and it's been great to be able to be on it with him. I knew it was my destiny. And that's powerful words. But if you have that vision in your mind, you can go out there and put the hard work in, make the sacrifices, and with a bit of luck, your destiny might just come true.